Well, that was the most magical way to start the day again. I didn't think I was going to go for a swim this morning because it was so grey and miserable earlier, but while we were doing the Pilates, I don't know if you'll have seen, the sun came out through the, through the trees in the background, all the leaves are turning golden, it feels like an autumn paradise here. And we just drove back uh, to the main house and I don't know if you will have just spotted all the deer running in front of us it's just absolute heaven here such a beautiful place i'm going to spin you around now i don't know if you can see over in the background there a couple of big deer big stags apparently it's rutting season so they're all a little bit excitable at the moment A proper good morning to you my darlings please excuse my makeup free face and hair swept away I thought today I would just have a very productive catch up with everything day so no makeup and hair required such a wonderful start to the day today at Cornbury house there is something so amazing about an ice cold swim even though it was my second or third time doing the swim I still got a little bit breathless. It's much warmer than it was earlier in the year. I think it was, was it May last time I went? I think probably May. Um, and the water was probably about five degrees warmer today than it was back then, but still, when I first get in, it's okay. And then after like 10 seconds, when the cold really starts to register, I really struggle to breathe. Um, and I have to just not look at anyone or talk to anyone and just really focus on my breath. But then once I would got that sorted, I don't know if I got any of that on camera. Obviously, I don't want to capture any of the other ladies um, getting into the water or anything like that. But they may not want to be seen on YouTube. Um, but yeah, once I got my breath, weirdly, your body suddenly then starts to feel warm. And I was able to go for a very leisurely swim, but it was such a glorious morning. The sun came out um, and it just felt great. So yeah, great start to the day. I've been trying to be very productive this uh, rest of this morning, just getting lots of admin done because I have been away with Elizabeth Arden. I had a lovely day in London um, and yeah, trying to get on top of things. Can you believe I still have not unpacked from Keflonia? So that is something that is on my to-do list for this afternoon. I'm desperate to also get out into the garden. I've just been doing a massive Harrods shop. <laughs> it is, um, as I'm filming this, their rewards sale has just gone live. I think, sadly, by the time you watch this, it will be over already. It was such a flash sale, but uh, I have made quite a few purchases from that. And I just generally have a lot of tidying that I need to do. Tonight, we have a really, really fun dinner planned. I hope the weather is going to stay as glorious as it currently is. We've got the perfect day today because we are heading to a place that is fairly local to us, 
We've wanted to do it, <laughs> sorry, crazy lighting. We've wanted to do it for quite some time, practically ever since we moved in and it opened up again. It's called Scenic Suppers. Scenic Suppers, challenging to say, <laughs> to say with a brace. Um, and it's essentially a load of greenhouses, I think, or like huts on a hill overlooking the sunset and you are served dinner in these greenhouses. So we are going with Ben and Robin, which will be really lovely. If you don't follow Ben and Robin on Instagram, Robin and Ben announced a couple of weeks ago that she is pregnant. She's having twins, which is so, so exciting. So it'll be great to catch up with them later today. The menu looks incredible. I hope it doesn't get dark too soon. Hopefully we'll have a spectacular sunset, but that is something wonderful for us to look forward to this afternoon. I arrived back to my desk this morning to find a couple of little gifts from Charlie, very sweet. So he has found somewhere online this very substantial thermometer. Gosh, is it really 24 degrees at the moment? Um, which will be perfect to go in the greenhouse, which is great news. And then when we were at the Raymond Blanc gardening school um, earlier in the week, the lady that was taking the class recommended this as one of her favorite gardening books. So it's a month by month guide on what you can grow, what you can sow, what you can harvest in your allotment. So I will very much enjoy having a look through here. I always find these sections especially useful. Jobs to do each month, sow green manures. Oh, I did not know that we could do that this month. Harvest apple and pears. In fact, it is such a gorgeous afternoon that I might just nip down to the fields and get some more blackberries because they are, there are so many blackberries growing in all the hedgerows around here and there's so much you can do with them, whether it's a crumble or freeze them and add them to your smoothies. So I feel like I just wanna get as many blackberries as I can bear to be bothered to collect so that I can have a stock of them for as long as possible in the fridge and in the freezer. They freeze really well. In fact, when I did the crumble last weekend, um, that was made with fl frozen? <laughs> frozen blackberries. I didn't even bother defrosting them, just chucked them in. And then obviously when you bake your crumble, they will defrost and they cook absolutely perfectly. And you can stick frozen blackberries in your morning smoothie as well. So I think um, the dogs are feeling a little bit needy this afternoon. So I'm going to take them out for a walk and get some blackberries. <laughs> Another little chore that I need to stay on top of is replacing the fresh flowers <laughs> all around the house. These ones aren't looking quite so fresh. The zinnias last so well in vases. Cosmos, unfortunately, a little bit um, more in need of regular hydration top-ups. Speaking of flowers, I'm going to give you a little garden update and flower update. This is my autumn crunch flower bouquet from Flowered, which I know you've seen a million times lately, but I honestly just think it is so beautiful. I have not touched this, I've not refreshed the water, I've not done anything to this bouquet as modelled by Handsome Dexy in a week, and it still looks just as good as when I first unboxed it. The hydrangeas are starting to go crispy, I really hope they hold their colour. Even the roses are still looking fresh, um, so just to toot my own horn, I, I think this is such a good value bouquet because yes, even though it is you know, flowers are expensive when you purchase them, but the fact that this one lasts for so long, I will be keeping the hydrangeas and the leaves and the poppy uh, seed pods especially all throughout autumn and winter. And to be honest, I'll probably keep them until next autumn as well, because I think they make such a gorgeous decoration in the house. Don't you agree, my little chicken nugget? Such as these ones that we've got either side of the fireplace. I just think they look so lovely. I adore this colour. We're going to have a house full of these if I keep buying my own bouquet of flowers. This was from that very first bouquet that we got um, when I was still doing like the samples and the testing for flowered. And they have dried out spectacularly. And I'll just show you through here where the second um, style of the bouquet ended up. We popped it here on this little entrance hall table. It's quite nice and round, <laughs> so it really suits this space. And this is the second bouquet. Um, I think it's called Always Autumn, if I remember correctly. And absolutely everything in here will dry out perfectly. So the hydrangeas, the poppy seeds. Um, I would recommend though with poppy seeds, the reel should be live by now on my account. So I'll pop um, I'll pop it up on the screen here and link it below if you'd like to see it with uh, voiceover um, for instructions on how to properly dry your flowers. But poppy seed heads do better out of water. So 
there's probably no water left in here to be honest now because it's been about a week since I popped it in here but whereas the hydrangeas do like a little bit of water in the bottom just to gradually dehydrate themselves the poppy seed heads prefer to be popped on some popped on some um, newspaper and stored in a fairly warm dry place like an airing cupboard or behind your aga and in a week or so they'll turn brown and crispy and then they will last forever. I'm very grateful that we very rarely bump into anyone when we go on these little walks because I am dressed very scruffily. I'm just bring my little, <laughs> where are these from? The White Company cashmere trousers, but they've gone a little bit baggy on the knees because I sit so, um, I sit with my knees up, which is not ideal for my trousers. Right, let's take my trunk. Oh, it's so gorgeously sunny in here. My tomato plants are taking over. We've decided, by the way, we're going to put the lemon tree outside the greenhouse in that corner there behind it, or lime tree rather, and I'm just going to cover it up in winter. Oh, I need to do some more tomato picking. Come on then, my bunny rabbit. Let's go and get some blackberries. my little vases and do a few cut flower displays seeing as it's such a glorious evening and I'll give you a very quick garden update just shared an update on my stories but I will share with you as well I had a few questions on my vases last time these are all from Amazon I will find them the exact set and leave them linked down below because they are very very handy so the herbaceous border is looking completely different to how it did a few months ago. It's a real, sorry Dexter relieving himself there, <laughs> it's a really different selection of blooms that's come up now, but equally as wonderful, just more green and more deep purple tones. The anemones still going strong despite the cooler nights that we had. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. I love it when you can still see so many in bud. I think they're so pretty, the shape of them when they're in bud. The euphorbia providing a nice bit of structure. These ones here. I can't remember the name of these, but Charlie would know. The colour of them is so lovely. I love these deeper purple tones as we come into autumn. What have you found, my Dexie? Who's in Dexie's garden? Those are some bumblebees. These are some bumblebees. I think these little flat shoes have been my best Amazon purchase of the entire year. Oh, my battery's flashing. How much more of the tour can I share with you before my battery dies? Let's quickly go down here. Oh, helicopter on its way back home. Now, I believe this eruption of purple, I believe these are called astor flowers. Might be wrong. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not, but I'm pretty sure they're called astors. I've never actually tried them as cut flowers, but I've just grabbed my scissors. So I'll give them a go in some uh, vases. They definitely need cutting back a little bit, so I'll take some inside to enjoy. This metal item, I noticed a couple of questions on that on the Old House Instagram stories, also from Amazon, <laughs> would you believe it? I've really been enjoying checking out their handmade section because there's so many little bits um, that you can find that are a little bit more unique. So that's how this area is looking. The yew head just had its first trim. Can you see this cobweb that's lying flat on the top there? <laughs> can you see it? How funny, this spider's been busy, but it's looking a lot bushier, healthier. And then down here, we've got my lettuce doing very well. I wish I'd planted winter spinach. I might just throw a few seeds in the ground and hope for the best. I think we've still got a few days of warmth that it might germinate. Um, do we have any raspberries? I think they are pretty much over now. Charlie's been picking them quite heavily. Plenty of beans, I might do a little bean harvest. Let's check on my courgettes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. Guys, I checked this courgette two days ago and I decided, oh, I'll just 
wait a couple of days until I pick it. It's a monster. Oh my gosh. This, this one here, this is the size that you should pick your courgettes. They were saying in um, Le Manoir, Raymond Blanc's restaurant, that they actually put courgettes this big. That is how big the Michelin star chefs use them. This plant, I cannot believe it's still going. Look, they're quite rude in their shape, but this is a baby courgette. I think that's too small to pick, a little bit ridiculous. But look, there's still some growing here. I'm actually going to give this plant a good feed because I could get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can see at least 12, aside from my ridiculously ginormous one, at least 12 more courgettes growing here. My goodness me. Oh, 13. There's another one down there. This one I don't think will taste very nice, but I am going to harvest it and it'll probably be good for a chutney. And something else that's getting very large is our rainbow chard but I had a little look online and there seems to be a really lovely rainbow chard and pecan pistachio um, pesto so I'm definitely going to give that a go that sounds delicious hear my father's voice he would tell me to move on he would say I'll be just fine yeah he would tell me we have time time to laugh and time to heal a favorite song is on repeat drinking wine until the dawn a lot longer down in the garden doing more picking and more cutting but uh, here is my garden haul from this afternoon we've got all of these beautiful cut flowers the cosmos are just ginormous this is probably twice the size that I would say they normally get to they must be loving their new position down there um, I picked a few little posies of dahlias the yellow ones here are getting absolutely ginormous as well and then of course my favorite the cafe au lait looking beautiful cupcake cosmos double wrapper <laughs> cupcake cosmos um, and then of course lots of colorful rainbow chard probably going to try the pesto recipe tomorrow and then i'll keep it in some jars and have it with some pasta during the week So this is our hut for the evening, epic menu, everything sounds absolutely delicious and then the view, my goodness, so you can book your individual little shed slash greenhouse for the evening. Wow, who told you about this place? How have I got two face masks in there? <laughs> I haven't worn this since last year. Um, to be honest, we've been meaning to come here for over a year because mm -hmm. they followed us on Instagram messages when they launched last oh summer my God. Um, and we missed out then. They must be. Light bulb moment. <laughs> so we have just found out that not only is tonight the last night of the summer, but tonight is the last night that Scenic Supper is going to be in this location. Charlie's genuinely livid. I am, because I have been meaning to come here for ages, and I was just like, oh, it's only 15 minutes in the house, because only when you put close within, you really appreciate the proximity. Yeah. The positive is, is think of the positives, their business has done so well that they're now basically expanding to a much bigger, more permanent site in Siren Cessna. Yeah. So for them as a business, it's brilliant news. Mm -hmm. For my selfish um, desire, it's, it's not good. No. So if they're, so 
So if there are any chefs watching and you'd like to do a pop-up in the Cotswolds, this fabulous location is going to be available soon. So yes, the menu looks amazing. Ben and Robin are going to be here any second. We've just ordered oh, a couple of cocktails. Short be shortbread, watercress scrambled egg. What? I lost. <laughs> chat to you while I get ready because I am heading on a flower workshop actually it's a seasonal wreath workshop at uh, Dalesford today which I'm very much looking forward to but I do need to leave in about 20 minutes I've not left myself a huge amount of time but I was really really eager to squeeze a peloton ride in this morning because especially at Pilates yesterday morning I just felt like my body really needs a little bit more movement. Um, so last night was just incredible. So, such an amazing location for dinner. Um, as I think I said in the vlog last night, we are both just absolutely gutted that we didn't go there sooner. And when I tagged them in an Instagram story um, that I took over the evening last night, I could see that I had actually messaged them messaged them in 2020 trying to book a table and um, I just didn't follow up which is really annoying so we could have gone two years ago and enjoyed it literally being on our doorstep um, but alas we'll have to do a little trip down to Sirencester if we want to visit them again and hopefully something similar will take their place uh, and then Charlie and I got home and I for some reason, I think it was maybe the espresso martini that I had before, um, after my main course, I was very awake. <laughs> so I finally caught up on, oh gosh, I've gone a bit pale with this foundation. I finally caught up on the season finale of Amazon's Making the Cut. I have been following it absolutely religiously since the beginning. If you've not heard about it, 
you can still catch up. I will leave a link to the entire series down below. So it's on Amazon. If you're a Prime member, it's super duper easy to watch it on Amazon Video. And it's essentially, uh, so it's Tim Gunn and Heidi Klum are the, the hosts of the program. And there's, I think it was 10 to begin with, aspiring, not even aspiring fashion designers, fashion designers in kind of early stages of their career, like ready to be trajected into greater things, very talented designers. And in a way that's a little bit similar, if you ever watched America's Next Top Model, these designers get challenges every single week. Um, and Tim Gunn and Heidi Klum and celebrity guests come along and they judge them, they give them constructive criticism, they give them feedback. Um, and each week, obviously, at least one or yeah, at least one of the uh, designers is evicted and then there's a winner. So last night I watched the final, so uh, spoiler alert, I will be mentioning who the winner is if you want to save that <laughs> until you're watching it. Um, so yeah, I watched the final last night. What I thought was so clever about the series was that each week when they did their challenge, they not only had to make a, a high fashion version of their look, but they also had to make an affordable version of their look as well. So really testing the skills of the designers um, and obviously under a huge amount of time pressure. Some of the designers were really pushed out of their comfort zone as well. So it's really interesting to see. And for me personally, with um, a textiles background, I studied textiles for one of my A-levels. Um, I got 100% <laughs> top in the country. Um, I've definitely mentioned that on my YouTube channel before and now I just sound like I'm showing off, but I do have a knowledge of textiles and manufacturing, how garments are made. So I found it absolutely fascinating, very entertaining. It's a very kind of high glamour program, like America's Next Top Model kind of meets Selling Sunset because it is set in LA. Previous seasons have been set in New York, so this is season three. Um, oh, and one of the most exciting parts of it is that every week when, um, oh, sorry, you can probably see behind me all the mess that is all over this room. I can't wait to tidy this room later. Oh, I just need to post something on Instagram because it is 9am, bear with me. <laughs> oh wow, I just left you at a major cliffhanger. So one of the most exciting things is that on um, the programme, obviously each week there is a winner and that winner of each day, their designs are actually created in real life and you can then purchase them on Amazon, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and the prize that the main winner overall receives is a million dollars and also mentorship and the opportunity to be completely trajected and really launch their career as an established, as a more established fashion designer. I feel like I need to shake up my brow game. I haven't been happy with my brows in quite some time. Um, but anyway, so yeah, fantastic. Um, re I really enjoyed the programme. Last night's finale was very, very entertaining. The catwalk show was just absolutely sensational. I could not predict who the winner was going to be, but um, now the winner's full collection is available up on Amazon. So you can shop mm -hmm. all of the winner's collection, shop their brand on Amazon. And I mean, that's just such insanely amazing exposure for them. The fact that people all around the world are able to shop this collection. Um, by the way, I had a few messages about this robe <laughs> last time I wore it. It is from Amazon. It is very, very soft and cozy. And this morning I was actually wearing one of, shall I mention the designer? Skip 20 seconds if you don't want to know who the winner is. I was wearing one of Yannick's designs for my warm up in the gym this morning. So, a lot of the designs are very um, contemporary, very kind of like streetwear style. And for me, I'm not quite cool enough to rock it all the time, but for workouts, for warming up, I like to. I dress the coolest, I would say, when I'm 
in the gym doing my workouts so I thought it would just be the perfect piece for me to do my warm-ups in and the gym is absolutely freezing at this time of year and it's only gonna get worse so I thought it was the perfect piece and this is obviously from the more affordable collection so you can shop the high-end collection there's some amazing white trench coats which I think look absolutely beautiful I thought this was really fun for the tie-dye trend of 2022 autumn 2022 got a little zip up and it's it's super duper soft. I don't know if you can see the texture here, but it's super soft. Um, so perfect on my skin when I am doing my warm ups and the start of my workout. Oh my gosh, I need to leave. <laughs> breeze in the background so made it to Dalesford apologies I had to dash very quickly then because I suddenly realized the time I had to leave um, but to finish off what I was talking about I will leave a link to watch Amazon <laughs> making the cut down below and also the winners collection um, and some of my favorite pieces from the collections that you're able to purchase on Amazon so now we are down in the Dalesford market garden which is such a beautiful place and we're starting off by collecting some foliage to create our seasonal wreaths so again you can just pick anything that you find in nature in the hedgerows in your garden um, and then we're gonna head back inside and learn how to turn them into a beautiful autumn wreath so we're starting off down here in the market garden and we are collecting some strawberry leaves a few different colors as they start to turn from green to red to brown and this is going to be the base of our autumnal seasonal wreath creating these willow circles, no wires, just willow um, woven around into this very sturdy circle and then we have got 15 individual bunches that are full of autumnal foliage, um, some bits that will dry out really nicely and now it's time to add them to the ring. of hours later and here is my finished wreath it's looking a little bit silhouette with beautiful sun in the background so I'll show you probably when we get home I showed you a few clips just now of the other ladies their finished wreaths which are so beautiful and it's amazing how we all started with the same materials but ended up with something completely different to each other mine was definitely the largest and the wildest oh my gosh um, I'm gonna have a little 
play around and like pull some bits out when we get home when I've got it on the door. I hope it's not too big for the door, my goodness. Um, but I'll show you better in a better light when we get home. But some of the details, we've got some beautiful hops, we've got bits of hydrangea, dried poppy heads, and it's, yes, it takes a lot of time, but it's actually really easy to make yourself at home. So perhaps I'll go through the steps with you next time I try and DIY it at home. Okay, my darlings, back home again. I have got quite a few little bits and bobs from the Dalesford um, farm shop to unpackage. But before I do that, I'm going to make myself some, well, a bit of an experimental lunch. It's half past two, so I just want something super quick. But I thought that in the time it takes my pasta to cook, I might be able to whiz up a kind of rainbow chard pesto. Never done this before, total experiment, but I'm gonna put in the blender um, a few of the leaves from my rainbow chard. I've got some basil from the garden. I'm just going to pick the nice leaves out of here. It is starting to go over a little bit, so I need to be a bit selective with the leaves. Some olive oil um, and some, I don't have any lemon juice, so <laughs> lime juice to make it into a sauce. And then I thought I would throw in a handful of pistachios, a real experiment. Um, but just hopefully something nice that I can flavour my pasta with. final result. It looks good, it smells good, so I'm excited to give it a try. I will report back. As you'll have seen, I also added some garlic and um, some pasta cooking water into the Thermomix, but yeah, looks good and a great way of using up my huge supply of rainbow chard. Well, my darlings, that pasta dish was one of the most delicious lunches that I have had in a very long time, full of goodness and antioxidants with the chard leaves. Gosh, ugh. My makeup has completely melted today. I look like a little pea head with my hair all scraped back. Um, yeah, absolutely delicious. I will definitely be recreating that one again in future. It just feels like it was a lunch full of full of goodness. I do feel, however, that I need a big coffee after that, though. Um, so I've made myself a nice oat milk latte, and this is my Dalesford haul. So first of all, I saw these lovely little artichoke. Uh, I think they're candle holders. They were using as table decoration in the home interior section. I thought they were rather lovely, so I picked up a large and a small, or large and a medium. Couldn't help but top up on a vine tomato candle, and then here we've got a couple of refills of the vine tomato reed diffuser. Um, I picked up a fig and balsamic chutney. I am gonna try and make my own chutney probably on Monday actually now, because um, I realized I need to buy some containers. I'll have a little look on Amazon for some containers. And I thought this one sounded delicious. The reason why I bought so much um, stuff, by the way, is because when you do a floristry course, you actually get a little voucher which gives you 10% off in the home and garden and 25% off the food area. So I definitely made the most of it. A few pestos, um, some ginger for the chutney, onions for the chutney, cheddar for the cauliflower cheese tomorrow, some tomato ketchups because they are the best ketchups in the entire world and also a top-up of the Vine Tomato um, hand soap and hand wash. Wild Nutrition tablets were not from Dalesford, but I didn't have time to take them this morning, so I'm going to take them um, with a glass of water now. And today I actually just posted a reel for Wild Nutrition, all about these daily essentials, and they have reactivated my 25% off code, so it's Josie25 for 25% off Wild Nutrition. It might not last that long, so I definitely recommend topping up on your lovely supplements. If you are as big a Wild Nutrition fan as I am, make the most of the discount code.
so here it is in situ from afar it seems to be the absolute perfect size i did as you just saw do a little bit of rearranging of some of the branches just to make sure the door opens and closes properly um but yeah i really hope it dries out nicely hopefully it'll turn slightly more golden it's very representative of things that we've got in the garden lots of um lots of different branches that you'd find in our hedgerows some hydrangeas the poppy seeds I think it is very wild and wonderful and the perfect size for this door. I think possibly the hops might be my favourite. I think a wreath that is purely made up of hops could be really lovely. Um, and then we've got the nigella seeds, hydrangea obviously, um, got lots of little herb bits in here, poppy seed heads. I think this was the black currant and then we've got some pistache leaves. Um, is that sedum possibly? Yeah, lots of lovely different bits of natural foliage so I will keep you guys updated in a few days time and in a week or so to let you know how it's faring and how it's drying out but for now I need to head back inside because I have got the world's messiest dressing room that I need to organize this is the arrangement that I did about 10 days ago now and to be honest, it still looks great, I think. Nothing is really wilting. Maybe I need to add a little bit more, freshen it up a tiny bit, but considering I've not touched it in 10 days, not even topping up the water, it's looking pretty good. Okay, I can't believe I'm actually going to show you this, but this is the absolute messiest my dressing room in the area that gets into my dressing room has ever been. We have got a... <laughs> my Kefalonia suitcase, which I'm finally going to unpack. This is embarrassing, I can't believe I'm actually showing you this. Would you believe I have just not even had 10 minutes to myself to tidy this area up? I've been putting it off for so long, and then in here, oh my goodness, I tried to hide it all from you this morning got piles of clothes over there piles of clothes over here oh my goodness where do I begin okay it's currently five minutes to five I'm going to pop on my LED face mask and see how much tidying up I can do in the next half an hour it's gonna be a big job I've been putting it off for so long I have no idea where to start so darlings wish me luck I'm gonna stick on a motivational YouTube video and try and get this room looking normal <laughs> darlings progress has been made but the top floor is far from being neat and tidy I've probably been tidying for about an hour but I still have not tackled my suitcase we have another trip oh, I seem to have pulled this jumper dress is <laughs> creasing in strange places um, yeah I have another long haul trip next week which I'm very much looking forward to so I'm thinking I need to think about that and not put stuff away that's coming with me on the next trip so I think I'm going to tackle the unpacking and the remainder of the tidying tomorrow morning because Scarlett and a couple of her friends are going to be arriving at the house any second now in fact I think that might be the gate um, we're going to have some drinks Charlie's on his way back from watching his old boys team play rugby and we are then all going to meet and go for dinner at the pit kitchen which is great because it is also one of their last evenings for the summer as well Full stop Can't believe I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening and midnight such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I own 